Giganotosaurus, my favorite dinosaur and one of the big three when it comes to the largest carnivorous dinosaurs, is the most impressive and largest of the Carcharodontosaurs, the shark-toothed lizards. I compare him to Hades in Greek mythology, because like the big three in Greek mythology, Poseidon, Zeus, and Hades, Hades is often taking a back seat, even though he's just as impressive as his counterparts. Such is the case here, where everyone's always arguing about T-Rex or Spinosaurus or something along those lines, and Giganotosaurus has stayed here steadfast the entire time. But we're gonna change that and show you what this animal is really all about. Our story begins in the southwestern badlands of Argentina in 1993, where amateur fossil hunter Ruben Dario Carolini was driving around in a dune buggy. This particular area is also known as Patagonia, which you may have heard of before in various media or scientific publications if you happen to follow paleontology. It stretches from both Argentina and Chile, and this time Ruben happened to be in Argentina when he discovered the tibia of a theropod dinosaur. Ruben lacked the means of extracting the fossil, however, so instead he took photos and reported it to the nearby university. From there, paleontologists Rodolfo Coria and Leonardo Salgado reported the discovery, and they managed to secure funding to excavate the whole fossil. What resulted was around a 70% complete fossil, with parts of the skull and most of the upper body and legs. Coria and Salgado promptly described and named the animal in 1995, giving it the name Giganotosaurus carolini in honor of the man who found it. Its name means Carolini's giant southern lizard. Now, in my previous Spinosaurus and T-Rex paleo profile videos, this would be about the part that I tell you about all the different specimens that we found of Giganotosaurus, but there's not that many. You see, if we're being completely honest, we've only found two specimens of Giganotosaurus, and one is basically just the lower half of a jawbone. We have the one that we just discussed that was found by Carolinia and named by Coria, which is labeled as MUCPV-CH1. The jaw specimen had originally been found in 1987, prior to the original holotype, but it just didn't have enough material to properly assign it to any given animal. It wouldn't be until 1998, three years after he had described and named the original holotype for Giganotosaurus, that Coria would assign this jawbone to Giganotosaurus as well. There are also fossil footprints called Ichnotaxa that may also belong to Giganotosaurus, but we're just not entirely certain. Aside from those first two specimens, some possible footprints, and those scattered and isolated teeth, we just don't have a ton of fossil material for Giganotosaurus, so we should be thankful that the original was as complete as it was. Before we proceed any further, I call this animal Giganotosaurus, but technically I don't believe that's correct. This is one of those gif-jif situations because folks debate on whether it's called Giganotosaurus or Giganotosaurus. I believe the person who named the animal said it's supposed to be called Giganotosaurus, but personally, I don't agree. But honestly, it's all just semantics. You can call it whatever you want as long as you're spelling it correctly. So both Giganotosaurus and Giganotosaurus work just fine, just don't call it Gigantosaurus. Now, I'm sure you're wondering just how big was Giganotosaurus and how fast did they grow? In the late 90s, a study was conducted on the oxygen isotopes of Tyrannosaurus and Giganotosaurus. The study showed us that these animals are homeothermic, or warm-blooded, and that they maintained a stable body temperature year-round. The study concluded that an 8-ton Giganotosaurus would have around the same metabolic rate as a 1-ton mammalian carnivore. This means that Giganotosaurus was likely a much more active animal than most folks would assume, consistently hunting to maintain their body size. The same study concluded that they would reach a full adult body size within around a decade of life if they maintained a consistent growth. Now, all that being said, similar studies have concluded the same for Tyrannosaurus rex, saying that they would have had a consistent growth rate throughout their life. However, nowadays we know that that isn't true, and they had a relatively slow growth rate as children until they hit their teenage years, in which they spiked and put on a ton of weight relatively quickly. So, as far as those growth rates are concerned, take that with a grain of salt, because further studies could prove otherwise and show that Giganotosaurus grew at a relatively slow rate, or maybe they grew even faster, who knows? Actually, come to think of it, an osteohistological study was recently done on the brand new relative of Giganotosaurus known as Meraxes. The study shows that this particular Meraxes was between 39 and 53 years old when it died, and it only would have reached skeletal maturity a few years prior. The reason this Meraxes was so old when it finished maturing was because it extended its growth period through a process called hypermorphosis, which basically just allowed it to extend the time it took to grow itself, likely because of a lack of resources. Doing so, of course, increased the time it took for the animal to grow, but it also meant it had to eat less and needed less resources to stay alive on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that Giganotosaurus also grew at the same growth rate, but considering how closely related Meraxes is, I think it's a fair assumption. 
With that being said, we can assume that's not the average growth rate for a Carcharodontosaurus, or in this case, Giganotosaurus specifically, but it may mean that Giganotosaurus likely reached skeletal maturity earlier than that usually, likely in their mid-20s would be my guess. It also means these animals may live longer than we originally thought and may have lived upwards of 50 years regularly, but of course there's no way to actually know that without more specimens to tell for sure. Now, when it comes to their size, we all know that Giganotosaurus is one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs that we know of, with the holotype estimated to reach around 12 and a half meters or 41 feet in length and weighing in at around 8 tons. Now, that is a behemoth of an animal, do not get me wrong, but it should be noted that the jawbone that I mentioned earlier also has its own size estimations because it's around 6 to 8 percent larger than the original. Being just a jawbone, nothing can officially be extrapolated about the size of the animal, but estimations have been put forth and many of them have seemed credible. If those size estimates are credible, then Giganotosaurus could reach up to 43 feet or 13.2 meters and would have weighed around 9 tons, with a skull alone that was nearly 6.5 feet. That means that Giganotosaurus is the second largest carnivorous dinosaur that we know of right now, just behind T-Rex and just in front of Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus fans, put your pitchforks down. Those are the size estimates based on current studies. However, that can always change as time goes on, and I'm sure we'll get a new size estimate for Spinosaurus any day now. Now, those are the most up-to-date sizes for Giganotosaurus, but there have been others in the past that had some rather wild estimations. For example, the original size estimations for the bigger jawbone or dentary fossil put Giganotosaurus at 47 feet, over 14 meters in length, and weighing 11 tons. With our understanding of science and dinosaurs growing more and more over time, I'm not going to say that that's outside of the realm of possibility. However, based on the fossils we have, I do think that that's a little bit too large. Speaking of that, there was a size estimate in 2007 that shortened the length estimate, putting them at 43 feet or 13 meters, but spiked their weight, putting them at over 15 tons. Of course, those are all old and inaccurate size estimates, but I think it's worth noting that another old estimate was actually fairly accurate. In the original 1995 size estimate for Giganotosaurus, they estimated that it would reach 12 and a half meters or 41 feet in length and weighed just shy of 9 tons. And I find that incredibly funny because a 2023 size estimation for Giganotosaurus placed them at the exact same size as their original description for the holotype specimen. Sometimes it just circles back around. Giganotosaurus is part of the group known as the shark tooth lizards, the Carcharodontosaurus, and it's thought to be one of the last of their line. Carcharodontosaurs can trace their family history back quite a long ways, and they're actually descended from the group known as the Allosaurids, and of course, everyone knows Allosaurus. In fact, some folks would say that Carcharodontosaurids are just big Allosauruses, and that's just an oversimplification in my personal opinion. But of course, being descended from Allosaurids, they do share some traits with them, like the crest above their eyes. The teeth of Giganotosaurus were relatively large and powerful weapons, not quite as big as Tyrannosaurus rexes nor as blunt and wide, but they were still impressive tools. They could reach up to 8 inches and they were long and blade-like with serrations on the edges, just like a shark. Now, I've mentioned this before, but Giganotosaurus has a wide occipital condyle, which if you didn't know is a part at the back of your head. The occipital condyle is the point at which your skull attaches to the vertebrae in your spine, and other dinosaurs have interesting ones as well, like Triceratops, which is how we know they can move their head from side to side. In Giganotosaurus, the condyle also allows them to move their head rapidly from side to side, much in the same manner as Triceratops, but it also allows the muscles to attach in different areas, which allows them to close their jaws much faster than other theropods. Everyone talks about the bite force of T-Rex, and it certainly is impressive and the most impressive amongst carnivorous dinosaurs, but that doesn't mean other dinosaurs had a weak bite force. Giganotosaurus, for example, had a bite force that was estimated around 3 tons of pressure. It's thought that they would use this relatively strong bite force in conjunction with the rapid closure of the jaw to deliver multiple quick and powerful bites to whatever prey they were capturing, and if it was smaller than them, they could also shake their head rapidly from side to side to incapacitate it. So, while it didn't have quite as strong of a bite force as T-Rex, it had a completely different hunting method, where T-Rex relied purely on raw strength and power to crush bones and bring down prey. Giganotosaurus relied on fast, quick bite movements and being able to do it multiple times. So they're a completely different style of predator with their own unique hunting strategy and methods. And I think that's just one thing that most folks don't realize, is that even though all these animals share a myriad of traits, they all have special and unique adaptations to allow them to survive better in their particular environment at their time. Giganotosaurus is no exception to that, and they are a unique and interesting animal with their own unique and interesting traits. 
I'd also like to talk real quick about how this animal is depicted in media, because there's a bit of a disservice going on. Across various media sources, from books to TVs and movies, Giganotosaurus is often depicted as just a blown-up T-Rex, slightly larger with three fingers instead of two. And of course, I understand that not a lot was known about this animal at that time, and on top of that, not a lot is known about it today. But even at the same time, there were always distinct differences that separated them from T-Rex. Even one of my favorite depictions of Giganotosaurus from the British TV show Primeval in Season 3 still has many of the Tyrannosaurid features, especially when you look at the face front on. I'm pretty sure the character Connor, played by Andrew Lee Potts, who's a goat by the way, even says that this is just basically a bigger T-Rex, which is not true at all. Of course, Primeval is not necessarily known for its accuracy, but that's kind of the point. When a T-Rex is on screen, you can kind of tell it's a T-Rex, but with Giganotosaurus, a lot of folks often assume that it's a T-Rex, even though it's not. And one of the biggest factors to that, in my opinion, is as people calling it a bigger T-Rex or showing it with a bunch of Tyrannosaurid features that it normally doesn't have. Real quick, shout out to the paleo artist Fred Wyrum, who's made one of my favorite pieces of paleo art ever that shows a more accurate version of the primeval Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus lived alongside quite a few other dinosaurs in a place known as the Candeleros Formation. Hatchlings and eggs may have been eaten by a small dromaeosaurid that lived here, known as Boetraraptor. However, like many raptors, Boetra raptor is a relatively small creature, and they also had a relatively long and slender snout, so they may not have even eaten creatures as big as Giganotosaurus hatchlings. The real challenge for a young Giganotosaurus would have been the abelisaurid known as a Crixinatosaurus, which could reach relatively large sizes between 21 to 26 feet, about 6.5 to 8 meters. If you know anything about abelisaurids, you know that a Crixinatosaurus was a relatively fast and powerful predator, even for its size. However, no matter how impressive a Crixinatosaurus is, once Giganotosaurus began to reach full sizes of around 30 feet or more, they were basically untouchable by other predators. Their only real issue would have been other Giganotosauruses or getting injured by their prey, which was likely sauropods. Now, I'm not going to try and make it all fantastical for you. Giganotosaurus likely did hunt sauropods, but likely never hunted full-grown adults unless they were pack hunters, which it seems they probably weren't. I'm not going to lean my voice one way or the other, because I think it'd be cool if they were pack hunters, but the evidence seems to point towards right now at least that they weren't, though there are the proponents that they still were, so I guess it's up in the air. That being said, Giganotosaurus was still the dominant predator of their area, and even if they weren't taking on the full-grown sauropods, they likely served as an important form of population control, making sure to take out too many sauropods before they all got to giant sizes. They're utterly brilliant predators, and despite us not knowing that much about them, they've managed to become one of the most famous carnivorous dinosaurs on the entire planet. One of the most fearsome predators to have ever walked the Earth, a hunter of giants and the king of the South, this was Giganotosaurus. Hey folks, thank you all so much for watching, and I'm sorry it took me so long to get this video out. It's been a little bit hectic on my end, so I appreciate every single one of you for your patience and sticking with me through this time. With that in mind, I'm beginning to catch up, so you can start to expect some more consistent videos coming soon, including an upcoming collaboration. Thank you all so much for your patience in getting me past 500,000 subscribers, and don't worry, the Dinosaur Myths video will still be coming out, but I'll save that for the 600k special. I couldn't be here without any of you folks, so thank you, truly, from the bottom of my heart. Remember folks to be good people, drink plenty of water, and have a fantastic day.